When it comes to game movies, there really are only two kings. Click, the immortal classic with Adam Sandler, and Sonic Forces, all cutscenes movie HD. I feel like Back to the Future 3 could potentially be included on this list, but following the recent allegations of plagiarism from the classic Wild Wild West with Will Smith, I can't really include it. But what makes these two movies a classic? Their message. In Click, the message is to fart in your boss's face, and in Sonic Forces, Sega makes a powerful argument as to why the government should put a limit on how stupid a company can make its character look. That's why I recommend... The impact that a message has on a movie is very difficult to identify. Movies that make a lot of money, or even ones that are popular among critics and reviewers, don't have to do shit when it comes to the message. But think, but think back to your favorite movies, and I can guarantee you can tell me what the message in it is. The message of a movie is what sticks, and it's the impact that lasts. And in my opinion, this is what makes Snowpiercer amazing. It's a master class in messaging in movies. It tackles so many issues, from education to, cla to the class divide, to human nature and violence, to capitalism, to religion. It tackles so many complex issues. Uh, one issue that it tackles particularly well was the issue of classism. You have these two parts of the train, the front and the back, where the back live like animals, and the front are living a lavish, luxurious life. They are divided in pretty clear terms by this one exact car filled with men holding axes in the same exact standard uniform. They are brutally violent and are actually losing a fight to the back of the train until the lights are cut off, un leaving the back of the train unable to see. Uh, in fact, the woman who is representative of the government has night vision goggles as well as the uh, axeman as well, and she is gleeful at the carnage she witnesses. Now, is this train car meant to represent police brutality and the very specific issue of officers turning off their body cams before violent interactions? Maybe not. It could just be a gruesome uh, action scene with spectacular visual and audio design. But it also could be. There's so many ways to interpret the many images in this movie. It's masterful how much messaging is fit into so little space. Another great example of the messaging is sushi, which shows how even more basic and simplistic elements, like one single prop, can represent so much when it comes to messaging. There are all these hungry people from the back of the car who work their way up through the train and reach this car that is filled with an aquarium over their heads, and they get served sushi, and they just completely pound it into their face. The woman who represents the government is talking about how they can only eat it twice a year. You're complaining about the damn sushi when there's literally cannibalism going in the back car. And now, is that the exact case in classism in America? No, it, but it's hard to argue that this doesn't represent the class divide and how what the rich argue about and what the rich talk about and complain about compared to the conditions that the poor live in. Like, you're complaining about eating sushi while the back has to eat people. There's a, many more great images, and capitalism is perhaps the best one. I think there's a motif of the Industrial Revolution. I suppose that isn't really a motif, but theme, if you will, of the Industrial Revolution. As well as the... Um Axeman as well. We Just hear me out here. There's a train car which is operated by children, which are two elements that are often referenced with the Industrial Revolution. The expansion of train and rail and the use of child labor. Like in the Industrial Revolution, the poor live in ghetto slums that resemble not the ghetto slums that exist in modern America, but the ghetto slums that existed in the Industrialization era. And also, just like in that era, trains are labeled as the savior of humanity and the engine of the economy. There's an interesting link to explore here, how everyone looks up to the eternal engine, repl either in argument about capitalism or religion, but that's something we could talk about later. Curtis seems sold upon taking the helm of the train until he sees Timmy underneath the floor operating on the train. Sort of to represent how capitalism seems like a good system until you see not only how it's run and how capitalism works, but also the negative impact it has. In fact, you could even go as far to make an argument 
about how police force were introduced in the 1840s to stop unionization of workers and how more generally the axemen represent a force organized by the government designed to keep the poor people from uniting and getting more rights. The point I'm trying to make is just that there is no objectivity at all and there's so much to explore in this movie. More broad messages are also there, like violence, the imperfect nature of people, and even failures of the education system that are brought up pretty clearly. The message behind the movie, or the underlying theme, is that our system can't be fixed, it can only be destroyed. And it's not something that's evasive, hidden, or particularly unclear, yet it never feels overbearing or shoved down the throats of the audience. And in my opinion, that is what ultimately makes this movie a marvel in my eyes. In almost every single scene, there is a message, there's a theme. And through the use of color, the use of sound, the use of dialogue, facial expressions, the use of props, there are so many methods in which the filmmaker can give us a message. Yet, most impressively in my opinion, it never feels preachy. Yet, it never took away from the really, really fun experience of this movie overall. The director of this movie, Boon Joon-ho, who was the same uh, South Korean filmmaker behind Parasite, masterfully makes this movie not only really, really damn good, but also meaningful and impactful. And I feel like the balancing of the messaging and the actual experience of this movie makes it marvelous and something that I would definitely, definitely recommend you experience. Four out of five. It's sort of like the good version of female Ghostbusters. Oh, she's sweet but a psycho, a little bit psycho, at night she's screaming. Subscribe to SDG. Oh, she's hot but a psycho, she's left but she's right though, at night she's screaming. Like the video and share it with your friends.